I'm Johnny Garage Johnson, and this is Hardcore Garage. Welcome to Hardcore Garage. Have we got a treat? <laughs> we have got another set of the Endura pins. These are the new and improved 440C stainless steel chrome plated with the Nitronic 60 chrome plated bushings. Not only do these things perform well and last freaking forever, they're beautiful. These are so, so beautiful. Perfect for you know a show truck or just an everyday rider that you are sick of changing out junk ass door pins. So we're gonna use these on Maui. It, it is squeaky. I don't know if you heard that whenever I was opening the door. So hopefully this will you know, totally fix that. And while we're at it, we're gonna go ahead and throw in a set of those new uh, roller pins too. Just, you can't have nice looking pins and then your roller pin be all ugly looking, right? So let's get to it. My buddy loaned me his uh, spare door uh, dolly, I guess you want to call it. So that'll help a whole lot when doing the door pins. That spring helps to keep your door open. So, but what you need is one of these little, it's less than 10 bucks for one of these guys. And it's way, way worth it than trying to do stupid shit to get those out of there, risking plopping yourself in the eye or something. So get one of these, you try to get it as far out as you can on the coils. I hope that's, and slide it in there. And then you'll use a ratcheting wrench or a regular wrench on this side. It'll compress it. Once I get it on here, I'll show y'all. Yeah, there we go. Can y'all see how it does that? And I'm just going to leave it in this machine that way. I machine. <laughs> Whatever you want to call it. So I'm going to leave it in there. When we're done, we just stick it back in there and loosen that bolt. But now, the door is not going to want to stay open. It's real, real nice to have friends in the auto body industry <laughs> that will loan you some of their stuff occasionally. This thing is totally homemade that he made, I assume. And it's got all kinds of adjustments on it, which is pretty cool too. I'll show y'all on the back of here. This right here adjusts the tilt. This adjusts that length, this length, and this right here adjusts up and down. <laughs> pretty cool. Something like that, I guess. I want to keep these things here away from the door. If we can do this now, let's loosen this a little. Okay, that raised that. Then I'm going to have to raise the whole thing, though, right? So maybe I should do that. And then tighten this guy back up. There we go. Spring out. Now what we need to do is tap these guys. This top one goes down. The bottom one goes up. Um, one thing that you want to do, and I can't even see them right now. And it's, it's, it's important, but it's not totally important because we have the other door to look at. So, But you definitely want to make sure that you see the orientation of which way your, your bushings are going in there. Because they, they're <laughs> different on the tops and bottoms. So I'm using a couple different tools here to try and do this. Whichever one works the easiest for you is what you should use. And the top one's not so bad. You can come down in from the top. I'm using a, uh, probably can't get it far enough away where you'll even see it. It's just a smashed up socket extension. And I'm dropping it in between the gap of the door and the, and the cab with the door open. Also a good idea to uh, use some PB blaster or some kind of stuff to loosen these up if they, if they look cruddy. So it's look like they're going to come out there fairly easy. And you can use a flat blade screwdriver once it drops down in there. And this really isn't difficult or 
time consuming necessarily. It's just a matter of figuring out what works. Oh, look, that just went down there pretty nice. They a little better. Of course, the camera is in my way too while I'm trying to do this. <laughs> I think this thing's jacked up too high right now, too. It's got me in a little bit of a bind. I could probably screw with that, but I don't want to do that until I get the bottom one popped loose. Let's see what we can do down here real quick. That one came up fairly easy. Wonder if needle knows. Oh, there we go. Look at that. Looky there. Work for a second. Can I get it with these? What's in there somehow? Not screwing any paint work. Up. Probably not. Nope. Um. I'm in a bind is what it is. With the way the door is sitting. And I don't know how to correct it necessarily. This would be so much easier as a two-man. See how that right there? Oh. Let me see if I can do that with my knee. Oh, yeah. I know you can't see me, but I'm able to pull the top one out, too. Hope it don't fall. Okay, both are out. Let's scoot it out just slightly. Now our next move is to get these bushings out of there. Can you see how bad that one is already? So this one comes in from the top. This one comes in from the bottom. And they're on the body side. The bottom, this one comes from the top. That one comes from the bottom. And they're on the hinge side. We're going to clean all this up too when we get these off of there. This was my first attempt at using this jig that I created. Well, maybe not really created, but made. And you can see where I improve the way that I put it together almost instantly, so I'm just gonna leave this part in here. Just so you can see that things are never improving. Right there I have the washer, the flat washer up against the bottom of the bushing, and it's only gonna push it right to the, you know, flush with the bottom of the hinge. And I'm assuming that I'm gonna take it off with the screwdriver when I get done with this. We'll speed this up, but you at least get to appreciate the struggle before I realize, hey, why didn't I put the carriage bolt the other direction? The head of the carriage bolt is like it was created to push bushings out. It is the perfect fit. You might also think that that wrench is going in reverse and you're absolutely correct. This is the passenger side, reversed, keep the perspective correct. I just improved in my way I was doing things so much I figured this would be better than showing you the wrong way to do it. We're going to let the rest of this play out in regular speed just so you can see how fast this pulls the bushings out. I don't know how you did them before, but I was basically popping them out with a screwdriver. A lot of times they'll just, you know, fall apart when you mess with them. But this is amazing. But I mean, you could use an impact and it would even make it quicker. But I wanted to just see how fast I could do it with this jig. And I was pretty impressed with myself, honestly. 
big old virtual pad on my back. <laughs> I used a 3 8 two and a half inch long carriage bolt, a 15 millimeter 3 8 socket, a 3 8 washer, and a 3 8 nut. And super simple. You probably got it laying around. I think I'm just going to keep one together so I don't forget that I have it and be trying this all over again. So your package is going to come with four pins, eight bushings, and five, um, I don't know what you really call these guys, uh, drive pins. Um, what that's going to, and those are probably the most difficult thing to do is pushing them through there. Not really that bad, but it's kind of tight back in there when you get to that point. The S10, the square body S10 bushings are all the same. The pins are all the same. Um, on the second gens, things are a little different. You've got a wider section at the top. I can't remember if it's both pins or not. You'd have to go back and look at my other video. But these ones are, you know, super simple, super easy to keep everything organized. Again, everything I'm showing you here is reversed from the passenger side. Um, mainly because, <laughs> again, I improved so much from one side to the other. On the driver's side, I was filing each and every one of these holes, pounding on them, pushing on them with uh, channel locks, <laughs> you name it. And then this hit me <laughs> and it is so much easier. And what I basically did was just flip the way that I used the jig over, insert the head of the carriage bolt into the 15 millimeter socket and that becomes the bottom. It goes on the bottom side of the hinge. Then you put your bushing, then the flat washer goes on the wide part of the bushing, and then a nut. And as you tighten, it forces the bushing down in there. No filing, no pounding, nothing. Super easy. That was about 20 seconds to push that bushing in. I'm almost ashamed how many times I've done that the hard way. Somebody smacked me. There's probably guys out there going, are you stupid? This is the way I've done this since I was 10 years old. <laughs> you guys are awesome. For those of us that didn't know this, I hope it helps y'all out and it saves you from broken bushings. If you're using cheap, cheap bushings, this is definitely the way to do it. Don't be slamming them with a hammer or trying to push them in with channel locks. Just try. Super easy. You got this. bottoms are exactly the same as the top. Repeat, repeat, repeat. I know you're making fun of that speaker wire routing. <laughs> I thought it was pretty interesting. At least I was able to stretch it out a little bit. It would have been very convenient had it not had any speaker wire, honestly.
this one got loose here for some reason. I still don't know why, but it didn't just fall in and it didn't fall out. Well, there you go. If that wasn't just the pit stop of changing out some door pin bushings, I don't know what is. I laid down some aluminum tape to try to be as careful as I could on this side. I did scratch the other side and you'll see that when I switch back to that video of me cutting the pin in half. And that play and quickly turn to I'll use the saws all very gently. This worked pretty well, but honestly, if we were on a show truck, a nice, nice show truck, I'm not sure I'd be comfortable doing this. This turned out very well with minimal scratches. Now, if you weren't doing the roller pins, you could just go ahead and put the door back on. <laughs> And we switch back to the driver's side and you can see the damage that I did to the top of the hinge with the raw blade against metal. It's fine. Okay, so it's definitely moving the roller pin. Oh, there we go. The bottom's out. ta -dow. So maybe that's the key. It's cutting that in half also. Oh, I think this will come out now. I hope anyway. <laughs> it's definitely moving. So we're better than we were before. <laughs> I know where it's at. Boom. I'm pretty sure Nick said these are going to have to be filed a little bit too, I think. That's what he said. I don't really know much about these guys. And from what I can tell, that right there is all that's going to be sticking up through that hole. So this one does hang down a little bit lower than the other pin. Let me get it and show you a comparison. I think this one hangs down just slightly more. I don't know. We'll see. As long as it can ride in that, we got a way bigger group here than we do here for this to ride in for that roller. So let me see if I can get that roller in there. <clears throat> Mold it in. Without being totally in the way. That's in there. Screw in the top here. Can't see nothing. I wish I had a better way to tighten this down because that boy gets kind of tight. And it is difficult to get anything in that hole. <laughs> this is not the not the best spot for tightening stuff down. So now you're going to get to see how long it's going to take to make quarter turns on this little thing. 
<laughs> if you were looking to save time here, I could have used a socket and a ratchet. I just didn't think about it at the time. One of the keys to getting the door pins in and out is being able to wiggle that door just a little bit. Here it's completely the wrong angle anyway, so we do have them started. That one should be fairly easy to get in. That one shouldn't be too bad either. Let's go ahead and finish those off. Let's see if I can tap this one up in there. Yes. These are the roller pins. Let's see if we can get them in there. I found it easiest to come over the top. Okay, here's what I use. This is a nail punch for doing like soffit and fascia. And I magnetized, ran a little magnet across this, and then I just lay it in there. So it's barely coming out of that edge like that. And then as you tap it, it's going to go in. I got it started. I'm pretty sure that's the way I did it last time. And this thing just slides right over top. And then you whack that piece right there. I'm not even going to show you all because. It's just screwing everything else up. But. Trust me. So the only thing we got left to do is put that spring back in there. And here we go. <laughs> if woman can't find you handsome, they should at least find you handy. We are doing good still. Okay, probably still need to touch that up right in there sometime or another. We got everything back in. Just drain my wires up here. It's crappy anyway, but so there we are. Let's test this out. Shuts pretty good, don't it? And obviously you saw that it was holding the door open. So that means the spring is working. I'm getting better, that's for sure. I probably had an hour and 15, 20 minutes maybe 30 minutes in the driver's side and probably honestly 30, maybe 40 minutes in the passenger side. That's how much improvement there was over the two. Um, scale one to 10 difficulty, probably six or a seven. Um, it's more intimidating than it is hard really. Again, I want to repeat, do it with a partner. If you can, it would be so much easier. And if you can get you one of those door racks, I'm probably just going to buy me one of those. I mean, with the amount of trucks that I have, what's the probability or the chances that I've got to do this to another one? Pretty high. And I think at Arbor, Harbor Freight, Ar Arbor, Arbor, I'm arboring some freight uh, from Arbor Freight. <laughs> I think they're 120 bucks or something like that. And they break down, you, you know, put them away if you don't need them. Endurapin. Dot com, e -N -D -U -R -P -I -N dot com, <laughs> C-O-M, is where you can get these things. And if you use the Hardcore Garage 15, all caps, you'll get 15% off, always. So when you do that, he lets me know how many people actually watch the video and use the code. And that's always a pretty cool thing. Hope you all enjoyed it as much as I did. As much as you can enjoy doing door pins, I guess. But when they look that good, that's a little nicer than some whatever the heck they're made out of. Doorman looking like grade eight bolts, <laughs> yellow anodized. I don't even know what. <laughs> if you have anything that you guys want to add to this, especially 
getting those roller pins out, man, I struggled with them on both sides and I, I do not have a perfect way to do that yet. So let me know. <laughs> All right, people. Hope you guys have a fabulous weekend and keep on trucking.